What's going on everybody? Brian here from PNW Vintage Outdoors. Today I'm going to cover my setup for white sturgeon. Make sure you stay tuned and if you're new to the channel make sure to hit the like, leave a comment down below, and hit the little red subscribe button down there. Let's go ahead and dig into some terminal tackle. So I'm out here in the garage this morning and I'm actually prepping up. I'm going to go down and do a little bit of bank sturgeon fishing and uh I wanted to just share what I'm using out there, what I prefer to use. Now, you're going to see people in the comments section, and I don't know why people are so compulsive to do this, but they're going to say, that's not how you do it. That's not right. That's not how you do it. The way I do it's right. Well, guess what? There's a thousand different ways to skin a cat. We'll just go with that. I found that this works good for me. Now, you might have a totally different way that you set up. But this works good for me. So what works good for me, that's great. If you have a way that works for you, I'm not saying it's wrong. Nobody's wrong. If you're catching fish, you're catching fish. But I'm just showing you what I'm using. So refrain from the knee-jerk middle school comments in the comment section, uh, unless you just cannot, uh, and, and you're compulsive, in which I'll just delete the comment. So if you have a positive comment to leave, that's totally fine. Now, white sturgeon largest freshwater game fish in North America. We're not going out to play with little fish, you know. I mean, salmon aren't little, steelhead aren't little, trout, you know, they can be little or big or whatever else. But basically what we're looking at here is we're, we're fishing for big game fish, heavy game. And um, so that comes with heavier tackle. And it's going to come with more weight, more weight than maybe if you're from a different part of the United States, you're like, whoa, that is some insane amounts of lead that you're using. Or insane line weights or big hooks these are big fish even the small ones are are fairly considerable except for what we call shakers which are your little you, you'll get little 12 inchers every once in a while they'll be down in the in the bottom of the river feeding and you'll get a little 12 incher or 18 incher and they're just tiny they're babies uh, but for the most part you're going to be looking at a two foot plus fish so 24 inches or greater um, and and they can run all the way up to seven to eight feet. I would say a six to seven foot sturgeon's not terribly uncommon. Uh, probably more common is going to be your four to five foot range. And you're looking at a fish that's anywhere from like the 40 to 100 pound class on average. That's what you're going to be fighting. So we use heavier tackle with sturgeon. So the first thing I like to talk about is the hooks. And by Oregon state law, since I'm here in Oregon, we have to use barbless. So you'll see that these are the Gamakatsu Octopus Barbless Hooks. It's got the little green sign that says no barb. And basically, um, if, even if you got the barbed hooks, you can mash that barb down. You could even file it off. These are stainless steel. Um, you don't have to use a stainless steel hook like this. You can use one that would potentially rust out, and that's good. Uh, these were available uh, at the time, and they had the heaviest hook shank because one thing that you will run into with these fish is they have an incredible amount of pull power. Not necessarily what I'd call fight power, but they have a lot of pull power and uh, they, they really can lay into you. So a good heavy shank, barbless hook uh, is, is a great place to start. You can run anywhere from a 5 odd up to an 8 odd. I've caught fish on all the different sizes. It really depends on the size of bait that you're throwing out there. If you're down below Bonneville Dam or you're uh, targeting oversized sturgeon, Possibly an eight aught hook would be a good way to go, especially with the size of the bait that you're putting out or in the size of the water column. I can tell you now a five foot sturgeon can get this eight aught hook in its mouth, no problem, uh, because you end up catching a lot of four to five foot fish and your whole fist, you know, can fit inside the mouth of that fish. So this hook here being, you know, that size is not gonna be an issue for that fish. So we got our barbless hooks and then we have our Dacron. So we use Dacron for leader and some of you may use mono some of you may use fluorocarbon that's fine use whatever you want i prefer dacron dacron's what i grew up with this is what we always use and i like 80 pound uh because i'm not necessarily targeting oversized fish uh but tough line makes a good 80 pound uh, brad's used to make little spools of, of dacron as well but i always get the 25 yard spool of dacron and i usually stick to 80 pound it ties easier uh it, it feeds through that hook eye a lot easier than like the 130 or the the 100 pound uh that's what i find anyway so when i'm tying my bait loop on these uh hooks it just feeds through so much easier and i can get a few more wraps on it so when i'm tying my egg loop i'm gonna go 
like five wraps there, right? You know, I want to make sure I do my five wraps on there. And then when I go to feed this back through the eye, because you got to feed, you know, when you're doing like an egg loop type, you got to feed it back through the eye. That smaller diameter just feeds through so much easier. Now, if you feel the need for the heavier line, go for it. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. It's actually going to help with landing the fish. Uh, but when you're going to do these types of, uh, you know, heavier game fish like this, um, it, it always helps out to have something that you're comfortable with. So 80 pound works out good for me. I'll trim off that tag end, everything else. But we set up our bait loop like that. And so that's kind of the start of everything. So I have my seven knot Gamakatsu barbless hook here. And I have roughly, actually, I can give you a length on this. I just kind of guesstimate my leader lengths, but I always trim them up to where they fall into a legal scope. Actually, this one's going to be fine. I got about 32 inches of uh, leader here. And some people say, well, it's too much. But uh, one thing you have to remember is, is when you're baiting, you're going to be using some of this line. Some people prefer magic thread around their bait, especially with sand shrimp. Uh, I, I don't like to mess around with that too much. And so, and like I said, that's a personal preference of mine. So I'll end up taking up, you know, you can see six inches of that. So it actually shrinks up that leader. And if I'm putting on a piece of pickled shad or if I'm using pickled um, squid or something else, I have that option on that bait loop. So now I got a second one tied up. So uh, I don't have to tie up another one while I'm out on the river uh, if I hang up on the bottom. And that's a problem. Uh, when you're fishing on the bottom, especially in western tributary rivers, what you're going to run into is, is you're going to get a lot of different things happening as far as snags and hang-ups and things like that. So um, keep your gear not necessarily cheap, but inexpensive. Next thing is, is the way I like to set up my, my line uh, and, and my weights and stuff like that is I'll use uh, like a size 3 swivel. And this is going to go on my main line. So if I'm running my main line, this is going to be the part that I connect my pyramid weight to. And you can see I have a six ounce pyramid weight here. That's pretty standard. And then in front of that to hold everything together, which is where my leader is going to connect. I'm putting a size one swivel here. My hook is going to go off this side. And I'm basically going to have a sliding weight set up like this. Now, there are these other types of sliding swivels that aren't going to abrade your line as bad, and you can use these too. What I find is, is that this works out really well for me because it's a little bit bigger and heavier of a clevis on here, and it just makes it easier to hook up. Because if I'm really fishing a hard current, I'm going to go up, this is like an 18-ounce weight, and I'm going to want to be able to dangle that weight on there and be able to still close up my clevis. And you can see that with this size weight, that clevis works out really well. So this can slide up and down. And what that does, that type of setup, is it allows the fish and your and your bait to sit on the bottom. So your, your bait's over here on the bottom. You have your sliding weight setup. Let me kind of rig this. And the sliding weight setup doesn't go before that swivel. It goes after. Let me get this on here really quick. There we go. So we have this sliding weight setup and you can see how it slides back and forth. Well, so that's stopped up. You get a fish grabbing on your line and just as a general idea of this, the fish is grabbing and a sturgeon uses suction. So when it's using that suction, that's sitting on the bottom still holding your bait and this part is getting sucked back and forth and the sturgeon sucks it in and out, which makes your rod tip go like that okay as opposed to a bump a bump like if you had a sculpin or a pike minnow or a, a smallmouth bass or a catfish you're not going to get this little tap 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 a sturgeon's a pulsating bite and you get a hold of the rod when you start seeing that bite and when it goes down again that means it's vacuumed that up and that's when you reel and set the hook and when you set these hooks you got to set them very hard because they are barbless uh, and, and a sturgeon's mouth is nothing but gristle. It's a very, very tough body part on a fish. And you got to punch through it with that hook. So you set up that sliding weight setup and it slides back and forth and it gives you a lot of play. That's why I like it. Now I see people do uh, what I call a dropper rig where they put their weight on the bottom and up the leader here a little bit. They'll have a three-way swivel and they'll go about a foot off the bottom. They'll have a piece of squid, sand, shrimp, worms or whatever else. And they set that up there and it's still kind of sits there 
on the bottom, but it's not necessarily on the bottom, if you get what I'm saying. It's down in the column. It forces the sturgeon to actually lift up, and then when they start sucking that bait, it, it's going to, you know, kind of be up there. You're still getting the sensitivity of the bite in that case because you're not fighting that weight. I've also ran just to a barrel swivel when I've ran out, so or, or like a, a snap swivel, like what I have on this 18 ounce weight right now. I've actually done this where I've tied my main line off right here on this side, and I've put my leader line over here, and I've put the weight right here. And that's when like I've broke everything off. I still want to fish. I'm still getting bit. And I'm like, oh, I'm out of swivels or I'm out of, you know, all the other components I need. I don't necessarily stop fishing. I just keep going because you never know. You could get grabbed. And if you get a big enough fish, they're going to be able to lift this six ounce pyramid off the bottom with the bite. But the thing is, is that that bite's still transferring despite the fact of having that weight here. That bite's still transferring back and forth on the main line just enough where even that weight might drag as that sturgeon's sucking on that. So that's... That, that can work too. But this is kind of my terminal tackle setup. It's very basic. Let's take a look at baits and rods next. I have two different styles of rods here. One is what we call a boat rod. Okay, this is a very short rod. This one here is a Shakespeare sturdy stick. Okay, this is a six and a half foot long rod and it's a medium heavy action and it's got a line rating of 20 to 40 pounds. That's mono, okay? I've coupled it up with a Piscifun Chaos XS60. This has a 28 pound drag, which is sufficient. It's a bait casting model. So in a boat, we're not necessarily gonna be casting super far. We're gonna anchor up in the relative vicinity of a deep section of water or where we're marking fish. And we're gonna maybe do a little bit of a cast, but we don't need to really pitch out into the main river channel or into a deeper spot. Um, and we don't need the same line scope as a bank rod. So a short single piece, six and a half foot boat rod. This is a very sufficient 65 pound braid. I don't care what brand of braid that you're gonna put on here, but 65 pound is about the bare minimum. You're gonna wanna run for sturgeon. Uh, in a boat, you're gonna be fine with that. There's no problems with 65 pound. From the bank, you can run into some issues with breaking off and we'll kind of discuss my experience with that. Uh, hooking fish and having them break off, especially in very snaggy areas with 65 pound braid versus 80 pound braid, something with a higher abrasion resistance. But 65 pound braid, this is a 6000 series for the Piscifun. Um, you might look at some of the other reels like the Okuma Coldwater. Uh, that's just the conventional size, just like this, uh, with a line counter that can hold up to 300 yards of 65 pound braid. Um, it's a big, robust reel. It's got a lot more drag to it, but this one here, this works out pretty well. So this is one of the boat rods that I have uh, that I use for sturgeon. My other rod here is what's, uh, this is a Shakespeare Big Water. And this one is a 30 to 65 pound braid rated rod. And it's a three to eight ounce lure weight rating. This is a 12 foot rod. This is a surf rod. It's made by Shakespeare. It's an ugly stick family. So it's got that nice soft tip on it. This is about a $65 rod. So it's not a super expensive rod but you can hurl a six ounce pyramid a long ways with this. So we're talking, you know, 75, 80 yards out into the channel. So you can get a pretty wicked cast with this. Uh, and then I've got it paired up with an old, old, old Pen Pursuit 2 6000 series reel. Never have a problem landing a sturgeon with that. And some people are like, well, you know, you're not really a fisherman unless you're casting with a bait caster. That's great and fine. I have a whole bunch of bait casters up there. I have bass bait casters. Uh, I don't have anything to prove to anybody, so what I like to do is use what's easiest to cast and retrieve and not have to mess around with intermittent backlashing or blowing out a drag pole when I'm casting six ounces. Um, that doesn't happen all the time, but it's happened to me, so I said, well, I'm tired of buying reels and having them rebuilt, so I'm just going to use a spin rod, and I get just as much casting distance, just as much fighting power, and just as much fun out of the fight on the sturgeon with the spin combo. Uh, each person can do whatever they want. It's America. It's a free country. You can do whatever you want. But this is what I do. And so I really, really, really enjoy this setup. And I keep it broke down in two. But this is kind of an example of what I have for that sliding weight setup. And right now, 
it's kind of wrapped around itself because when I got done fishing the other day, I just put it away. And so I have this here. It slides up above the, the swivel. And I have my, my hook set up there going down there. What's nice about this two-piece 12-foot rod, it's got plenty of casting power. It's got a really large base on it. I'm going to say it's about three-quarters of an inch right there. And it's got really good sensitivity for the size of rod that it is. I, I believe that it is a heavy, it's a heavy action rod, but man, it's got great sensitivity. That's what I like about this rod. It doesn't have to be a $1,000 rod to be likable. $65, I get great tip sensitivity out of this. No problems with my fights whatsoever. Um, the only problem that you really run into is, is I would suggest um, going to an 80 pound braid for shore fishing. And the only reason why I say that is, is because when you are fishing in some of these areas, you're going to have parts of the river that come in and then they really drop down sharp and up here on the rim or the edge of that, that underwater trench. There can be logs, there can be large boulders that are really sharp. And when a sturgeon gets hooked, they tend to dive. Anybody that's caught sturgeon know that they want it. They, they get that ouch, you know, they're, they're hooked in the mouth. And they're like, ouch. And they go down and they try like suction into the bottom. And you're, you're up there. You're like, oh, I got a huge fish. Well, what ends up happening is, is you're abrading that line across that, that upper area of that shelf. And if there's a sharp enough rock there, it, it doesn't matter that it's 65 pound. I mean, that that's tensile, but you can take any weight of line like this 80 pound Dacron. I could go caveman on a rock with it enough times, maybe put 80 pounds of downforce one way and 80 pounds, you know, or I don't know, I weigh 200 pounds. So I have 200 pounds of force this way. 80 pounds from the fish this way, that's going to eventually cut it. So you're going to have all kinds of stuff going on there. You might want to go up to a little heavier line to avoid some of that abrasion and successfully land some of those fish. So those are the two different kinds of rods. One's for boat fishing, one's for bank fishing. But why don't we head down to the river now and go do a little bit of bank fishing? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put a sand shrimp on here and uh, probably a piece of night crawler and send it up. So I have my uh, little box, my to-go box from the Chinese restaurant here. No, it's not from the Chinese restaurant, it's D&G Bates. And I'm gonna go ahead and find myself a really good piece of sand shrimp here. Actually, I'm gonna use a whole sand shrimp and I'll show you how I rig these here. So they come in this box. And as you saw earlier in the video, we got these nice live sand shrimp. They're kind of alive still. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use these up. Typically I declaw these, but these guys are pretty lifeless. So I'm just gonna leave as much meat on there as possible. I hook them through the tail section first. So I go down, I go up through the tail section and I thread that on to the hook. And this is a seven aught hook that I'm using. So I thread it onto the hook to where that hook is still out there protruding. And then I take my bait loop and instead of magic thread, and you can use magic thread if you want, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to half hitch all the way around this piece of sand shrimp. And I'm going to go four or five wraps around it. That's usually sufficient enough to hold it on through the cast and get it down to the bottom where we want it to be at. So I go through, do all that fun stuff, and then I'm just going to pull that loop tight. You don't want to obstruct the point of the hook, so sometimes these fish, they'll actually hook themselves. And we have our sand shrimp rigged on there. Then I'm going to take some of the Procure. This is water soluble. This is a sand shrimp scent. It's a uh, water soluble spray. Works really good on steelhead jigs too. I'm just going to spray this out here. And you notice I'm trying to keep that away from me. So give it a good douse. Uh, we can also use the sand shrimp oil too, but I prefer to use this to start. It's been working good lately. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now I'm going to get ready. I'm going to hurl this thing out there. Line up with your cast. And you can see it's out there right where I want it. Now I'm just going to let this free spool out until it hits the bottom. And definitely get a stir to bite. I figured out what was stealing my bait. It's a uh, northern pike minnow. So I'm gonna take care of this guy and I'm gonna get some more bait out there. So little tiny bumps. He took a seven-aught hook, so that tells you 
Uh, Sturgeon will take this size hook. This is a stronger bait, so it's going to take a little bit more suction biting. And we got him. Yep, I do. Fish on. Oh, yeah. Fish on. Definitely a fish. It's real heavy too. He was on it. Not a big fish. Take it off. Make it It's gotta break him off the bottom. Oh, he's gonna come up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Came up to the top. Oh, don't you dare! Don't you go into those logs, dude. Not the huge one. He's not huge. Oh, he's got a lot of spark. There he is. Right next to that. Yeah, he's good. get them unhooked and there we are they got stemmed like a like a shark so he's going back say bye buddy there we go <laughs> Woo! all right getting bit again That's a little better fish. See if he wants to jump. Oh, man. It's not dark on the surface, but. Whoa. Okay. What in the wood do I? Just don't hang out. Please don't. Don't wiggle up. Oh, he broke up. Uh, dang it. Got a good one here. Got my chest mount. Sturgeon, baby. Well foot surfer. Oh yeah. I don't do it. I'm running to that dock. Oh yeah. Good four foot. Big old Leviathan. Okay, there you go. That was five minutes of fishing. That's a good four footer right there. Sand shrimp, night crawler. I'm gonna get this guy kicked loose. But that is, that's always a fun fight right well, there. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. I only got a couple sturgeon a day in me. <laughs> so I, I uh, got home, I had some other stuff I had to take care of, but it's a fun way to spend a couple hours, especially if you live here in the Pacific Northwest, you live on the Columbia River or any other tidal waterway where you have the white sturgeon. 
they'll pretty much bite anything as long as you find the deep holes you can go out and it's a fun fish to go after you don't need expensive gear you don't need a whole bunch of other stuff all you need is a long rod a heavy reel some good line and some tackle and you're set up and you're ready to go nonetheless everybody don't forget to hit that like button down below and if you're new to this video and you've made it to this point hit the little red subscribe button make sure that you subscribe to my channel i'll have a whole bunch more stuff out anyways everybody thank you so much for watching i hope everybody has a wonderful day